Okay, my friends, let's continue now uh, talking about passive voice. Here we have in the active grammar, passive voice uh, that is related about past, okay? So here we have number one, as you read yesterday, use the, use the active form to say what the subject did. Okay, in this case, we have the subject that is crumble and the verb stall, new cars. So crumble did this action. That's why it is active, okay? Crumble performed the action. In the second example we have here, use the active, sorry, it's not active in this case, it's passive. Use the passive to say what happened to the subject. So what happened to, to crumble? What happened to the subject? Use it when who or what causes the action is unknown or not important. Okay, in that case, we use passive, use the passive. So 39 cars were stolen. In this situation we have, the cars received the action that Cramble did it. Uh, so as we are beginning here with 39 cars, that was object in the active and it is subject in the passive. So here we have the verb be plus past participle. And that is called passive voice. Okay, when do we use the passive voice? When who or what causes the action is unknown or not important. Okay, and here we have the form was or were plus past participle. I wasn't giving anything to it. What punishment were they given? As yesterday was explaining. Now also I will explain um, here. I have more examples for you. You can see here uh, the, stru the structure of passive, passive voice into past, okay? We have the verb be plus past participle. Verb be, talking about past, we have was or were. Okay, and past participle in regular or irregular verbs. Okay, so you have to use the past participle. Yeah, uh, example, active voice. Okay, let's begin uh, writing an active voice. Active voice is Alonso de Mendoza founded La Paz. Okay, we can change this active voice into passive. We have here Alonso de Mendoza is the subject. Founded is the verb. So, who, who did this action? Alonso de Mendoza. What? Founded La Paz. Okay. And in the active vo passive voice, we're going to write uh, La Paz. La Paz. In order to organize the passive voice, we need the verb be. La Paz was founded. So, yeah, the, the grammar says when is unknown or not important, but now it's important, it's possible to use. How we can say, uh, yeah, we can say La Paz was founded in, what date was that? Yeah, when was La Paz founded in, uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can use here, uh, Alonso de Mendoza founded La Paz in 1548, okay? Now, as the text, the grammar says it's not important, we can say like this, La Paz was founded in Yeah, in 1548, okay, like that, and period. But for us, it's important, I think, to mention Alonso de Mendoza. So, and that's why we're gonna write here, 
eh, La Paz was founded by, by Alonso de Mendoza. Yeah, okay, like that. La Paz was founded by Alonso de Mendoza in uh, 1548 period. Okay, that's uh, one way. Okay, Alonso, La Paz was founded by Alonso de Mendoza in 1548. As you can notice here, the doer can be there or can't be there in the passive. Can be like that. La Paz was founded in uh, 1548. Or La Paz was founded. Or it can come here, no problem. Okay, oh sorry. By Alonso de Mendoza. Yeah, it's possible like that or without the doer. Okay, but what do we have here? We have the verb be plus past participle. Okay, verb be plus past participle. In the active voice, no, in the active voice, we have just the verb in the past. Okay, another example here we have Puma Cataris. Yeah, um, we can say here last November it was right or not. Yeah, many people burnt Puma Cataris last November. Do you remember? And that is active voice. We have subject, verb, and all of it is the, the object. Here we have now, let's change into passive. To pass it, we're gonna take Puma Cataris. Okay, Puma Cataris is important. So, then in the passive voice, Puma Cataris becomes the subject. Okay, Puma Cataris becomes the subject. And after the subject, that is Puma Cataris, we need the verb be in the past. It is plural, Puma Cataris were. Puma Cataris were the past of past participle of born is born, 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 right? Yeah, it can be like that or like this, okay? Puma Cataris were born last November. We don't know who born, right? We don't know. So that's why here we have, yes, Puma Cataris were born last November. Okay, so uh, that's why here we have subject. Puma Katari becomes the subject and the verb were born. And here we have a object, yeah, last November. Okay, it's a complement. Okay, it's a complement. Adverbial time complement. Yeah, so we have here that those are passive and active voice. Okay, passive and active voice. Another example active voice we have Bennett. Do you, do you know Bennett? Yes, right? Maybe you don't know, but we know Monolito Bennett. Yeah, we have here active voice Monolito Bennett. Uh, yeah, active voice. Subject is Bennett because he discovered what? He discovered uh, the monolito that is in um, the museum, right? Tiwanaku's museum, yeah? An object, here we have that, okay? Subject, verb, and object, Bennett, 
Yeah. In the passive voice, what do we have to do in order to organize a passive voice? We have to take monolito Bennett at the beginning to change into passive voice. Monolito Bennett. After monolito Bennett, what do you need? You need the verb be in the past. As it is singular, was. Monolito Bennett was discovered. Yeah, Monolito Bennett was discovered. In this case, um, we can mention because we have here the doer that is Bennett, Mr. Bennett. Yeah, like that, period. And what do we have here? We have that Monolito Bennett was object in the active voice, in the passive voice is the subject. And because of passive, we need the verb be and the past participle, and the doer is the object, okay? That is the way to organize a passive voice, okay? Let's move on now. I will show you another example here that I have uh, here. In this text, for example, we have forming the passive. Active voice, passive. Active and passive. Active is Mary helped the boy. Subject, verb, and object. Passive, the boy was helped by Mary. Okay, so the, the boy was in the active subject, in the passive is the, I mean object, in the passive is the subject. Mary was the subject in the active, in the passive, goes at the end and it's working as a object, subject verb and a complement. Okay, says active boys, an accident happened, uh, so passive voice, no one. So uh, here we, we it's explaining, as you can, you can read it. Why, okay? It's clearly explaining why the active changes into passive. What I want to explain here is, yeah, it says, as you can see here, the form the passive plus, verb plus past participle. In any tense, look at in any tense, we have simple present, present progressive, present perfect, simple past, past progressive, past perfect, simple future, be going to future perfect. As you can notice, we have in the in any tense, yeah, in any tense, you can use the passive voice, okay? Uh, now we're working in this part, simple past, okay? But as you can study this part, you will, um, clarify how to do, how to organize, yeah? So, <clears throat> look at, Mary helps the boy. The boy, it helps, look at, it's in the present, and into passive, what do you need? The verb in the present, the boy is helped by Mary. Present progressive, Mary is helping the boy. Active voice, passive voice, the boy is being helped by Mary. You know, here we have the verb be because of progressive, being, past participle, helped. Present perfect, Mary has helped the boy. Active voice, passive voice, the boy has been helped by Mary. Simple past, Mary helped the boy. Passive, the boy was helped by Mary. Past progressive, Mary was helping the boy. Passive voice, the boy was being helped by Mary. Past perfect, Mary had helped the boy. Passive, the boy had been helped by Mary. And so on, okay, as you can notice, here we have the active voice, changes into passive using the verb be and the past participle. Okay, that is active voice and passive voice.